Request Wise back again at you today. Today we're going to be talking about Starfinder, the new role-playing game by Paizo Publishing. This baby is huge. It weighs into over 500 pages. Beautiful, glossy artwork into this. Let me give you my thoughts on this. A lot of people say that Starfinder is just Pathfinder in space, and at some points I agree with that, and at some points I heartily disagree, and I say absolutely not. For one, the storyline doesn't use Galarian, the original world of Pathfinder, the setting for Pathfinder, and does advance it into the future. They do some pretty genius stuff, though, in that they've changed some things so that you can play both of them in some in any kind of like storyline type of mode, campaign mode, and they'll never you'll never have to worry about crossover. The great thing about it being sort of left in that sort of science fantasy kind of realm is that you can bring over anything from Pathfinder. And there's a section of the book that tells you how to transfer stuff back and forth between the two games. Now, rule system, fairly fairly straightforward. If you played any other D20 games, especially Pathfinder and or 3.5, you're going to be very familiar with this game. It's very easy to pick up. Uh, there are a few tweaks and changes in here that simply sort of streamline the way the Pathfinder had run, which makes things a little bit smoother to play, but at the same time makes it a little bit more difficult. If you're very familiar with Pathfinder, you're going to struggle with this one a little bit. While the basic mechanics are all the same, there's no changes there, they do add some things that might be a little more frustrating to you because you feel like you should just be able to jump right in. But there are some enough changes that you almost have to read the entire book to figure out what they are. Um, not a bad deal because this thing stands on its own, uh, perfectly well, and it's a beautiful game, but, um, it, it could, could be a little maybe frustrating for those who are hardcore Pathfinder players. Now, when I say that yes and no about the whole Pathfinder in space thing, this is very unique and it very much has its own flavor. It has its own very distinct sort of standing on its own. I would compare it more to like. Shadow run in space. All the races in here are new and they're fresh and they're exciting. While you can play traditional races and they are mentioned in the book and they give you some rules in the back of how to convert those over from Pathfinder, they are not any of the core races that you can actually play from the book themselves, from the book itself. So you're not going to be flipping through. You're going to find humans, but you're not going to find elves. The elves are going to have to be converted yourself. Uh, using the rules in the back of the book. But you are going to find some really awesome other races as well, including androids and some a variety of other things. Check that out yourself. You guys can see all that stuff. And there's plenty of other reviews out there um, showing you exactly what's in the book. What I want to give you today is my thoughts on, on the book itself and how it plays uh, and and sort of my... If you watch one of my other some of my other videos, I've been talking about how I've been looking for a game about pure exploration as part of the rpg a day questions i mentioned that i would like to see a role-playing game that was about pure exploration and i've been doing a lot of research and and purchasing a lot of games that i've been that I, that I hope to use to play out a more of a sort of pure exploration type of campaign first of all like i said it's more like Shadowrun in space it seems to be draws a lot of inspiration from Shadowrun. there's a lot of like very high technology, cyber techy type things in this game, as well as blending it all with magic. Is and and while I thought that was going to be very clunkily done, I think it does a very very good job. Uh, very much like what Shadowrun does, where it blends the magic and the tech together very very well. Uh, I already mentioned that there's a very unique variety of races in there. Um, the only one that I find that seems to be a little cheesy, and and at first it was cheesy when I started to read more about the uh, the background and the and some of the, the the versatility that the race has. The little rat race, I can't remember what they're called, but they're sort of like rats in space, um, which you know, which is kind of funny that I would say that they they kind of annoy me because I love the space goblin idea, a hundred and ten percent. I think that's badass, and I can't wait to unleash that into some players. Uh, one of the cool, unique things I found about the game was that the every all the weapons and equipment have a a, a level. It's not even a tech level. It's sort of just a level in the game. One of the big changes from Pathfinder is that they everything has a level now. What I think is interesting about this idea 
is that it's easy to tell how powerful an, a certain type of equipment or a certain type of item or a certain type of weapon is by just glancing at the power level, the tech, it's not a tech level, it's more of a power level. And so a level one weapon is going to, not going to do a lot of damage, maybe 1d4, maybe 1d6 at the most. And you can tell sort of at a glance, uh, either player or game master alike, how that's going to play out in the game. Now, all of this is optional. You don't have to abide by any of this. The players, you can give the players a level, you can have first level players and give them a level 10 weapon if you want to, if you want them to have that kind of power. But it allows you to quickly create adventures and to quickly create scenarios in which everything is, tends to be fairly balanced. You can have a fairly good uh, tactical game uh, by using just using these power levels on various things like equipment and weapons, and there's there's there are grenades that have levels, there are weapons that have levels, there are just technology that has levels as well too. So an interesting kind of twist on things. I like it a lot actually, and I like the fact that it tells you in the book that it's not binding. That first level characters don't have to be stuck with level one technology. You can give it to them as high as they as you want uh, as a game master. But you also have to realize that it's going to sort of unbalance things. If you give a first level or second level character a level five grenade, you know, game over. You're you're going to wipe out the entire room of enemies, and possibly even yourself, um, very quickly. And so it's a cool cool idea, cool cool mechanism that they've added into just Starfinder. Kind of interesting. Um, something they've added as well too: stamina and hit points. A little bit different from your traditional sort of Pathfinder game where you have just hit points. Um, let me preface this by saying that I have a real problem with hit points. Uh, I realize the hit points have been around since the dawn of the hobby, uh, but I find them to be very... I've grown to sort of have a love-hate relationship with them. I understand how hit points work, and I understand what they're for. Uh, I find, though, that they tend to be uh, not abused, but tend to be not well used. Let's put it that way. Not abused, but not well used. Um, in most role-playing games, I'm quoting D&D and Pathfinder here as my sort of inspiration, you you have a certain set of hit points, and at, at lower levels, they're going to be very low. At higher levels, they tend to be very, very high. And when you take damage, you subtract that from your hit points. The problem is, is that you, in most role-playing games, you are perfectly fine and fighting order until you reach zero. So you have no mon no 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 negatives to your rolls. You don't have any. There's no detriment to your character until you reach, uh, you know, until you reach zero or less. And then I never understood the whole and less thing. That drives me kind of crazy. Um, but at what point your character starts to die? Uh, it, it doesn't feel realistic, realistic. It doesn't feel, it, it makes it very, very gamey. And when you're trying to immerse yourself into the game and you and do a lot of great role playing and, and trying to create this, this wonderful story, the hit points just feel sort of out of point. Uh, they, they just feel out of place and they feel clunky and they feel weird it feels like it breaks the immersion a little bit. I've grown to love games that have uh, like wound levels. I've grown to love games that sort of have um, hit points that are based strictly upon your constitution and your strength, and those don't ever change. Um, because, uh, you know, you get a high-level character who has hundreds of hit points. There's no, you know, you... you any lucky shot still not going to hurt them at all. It's simply going to scratch them, and they're going to, and they're going to keep on fighting, and they're going to keep on fighting really well until they're still at zero points. Uh, but I'm thinking that the way Pathfinder does this is very similar to the way that Palladium has done it for years and years. So what Path or what? Excuse me. What Starfinder has done is they've added stamina points. This is sort of like how much abuse your body can take before you actually start to become wounded. So your stamina points are always going to take the first... You're going to get... 
that's going to take damage first. You have stamina points and hit points. When you take damage from a weapon or explosion or whatever, a fall, your stamina points are going to take that first. These This accounts for, like, bruising and beating and that kind of stuff. Not actual, like, cuts or wounds and that kind of thing. Um, so your stamina points take that first. Once your stamina points are gone, and now some there are some certain circumstances where it will skip your stamina points and go directly to your hit points. Some very, very deadly attacks would take directly from your hit points. But once your stamina points are gone, then you start to take real damage. That's when your body has been beaten and abused to the point where any more damage done to it is going to start to kill you. Hit points in this game tend to be very low. When I say low, I'm you know I'm talking not triple digits. Uh, and your stamina points tend to be a little bit higher. Interesting concept. Nothing new, though. Uh, Palladium's been using the system for a long, long time, for years and years and years. They have a little bit different name. They call it Structural Damage Capacity, or SDC. Everything in the world has SDC. A wall has SDC. A table has SDC. A door. And, and yourself, your body. Your body can take so much abuse before it actually starts taking hit points, at which point you start to, you start to die. So Starfinder adds that in there. They call them stamina points. Interesting idea, uh, but nothing new on that on that front. And the next thing I want to talk about was two different types of armor classes. Now uh, I thought this was going to be confusing, but it's really, really not. It makes a lot of sense, especially in the science fiction game, where it's not just bows and arrows and swords and maces. You're now talking about like rail guns and you're talking about like laser technology and you're talking about standard old slug throwers and that kind of stuff so interesting effect that certain armor is made to resist energy damage like laser beams and stuff and a little bit less on the more kinetic side of things like bullets and or punches uh, where other armor is just the opposite and it is built more like a kevlar vest to try to stop a bullet but a laser or some kind of flame weapon or light weapon is going to pass right through that very easily. So the two are energy armor class, EAC, and kinetic armor class, KAC. It's really interesting. Not confusing at all. And, and, and it will tell you, you know, they'll have different varieties. And each weapon will tell you whether it's a kinetic or an energy type weapon. And how much damage that's going to do, uh, or how much your armor is going to protect you from that. So interesting. Very cool. I like that. Um, I was, like I said, I thought it was going to be a little confusing, uh, but once I read it, it totally made sense because, um, you don't want just one straight armor class for everything. Lasers are going to do different type of damage than what a bullet's going to do. And so it's nice to have that sort of differential between the things. Space travel and combat. Space travel in this is interesting. Uh, rather than having a faster than light. Uh, a type of a thing uh, of time tra of uh, ship travel, um, hyperspace, whatever you want to call it. They call it the drift drive and or drift travel. And it's an interesting concept. I think it's kind of a throwback to the old Star Jammer thing from uh, from from D and D or Star Jammer, the old Space Jammer uh, thing from D and D. This is Starfinder, um, but. Well, it was Star Jammer, wasn't it? I don't know. Anyhow, the old D&D &D setting where you would go into this sort of void type space and you could travel from different realms to other realms. And in this one, it does the same type of, type of thing. Um, one of the designers of the game, there's a great interview with him over uh, at the Taking 20 channel. And he describes it as sort of like passing into another dimension and traveling through that dimension to come out into a different place in space. Um, and because time is different in those two different spaces, it doesn't take you very long to travel from one part of the, 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 um, the solar system to another part. But this other void, this other dimension is a huge space. The problem with the drift drive though, is that when you do it, when you use it, it tears a piece of another reality off and brings it into this, other realm as well to this drift realm and so he describes it as partially as one of my all-time favorite science fiction horror movies event horizon where you 
you pass into a different dimension and come back out. But what's in that other dimension? According to uh, Event Horizon, it was hell. And it was populated by you know, demons and the dead and, uh, and these horrible, horrible things. So this can be very true in this, this game as well, too. That when you travel into, this, into the drift, part of this thing get, gets torn off from another dimension and sort of brought into this thing. So it could be everything from another science fiction universe. It could be another fantasy universe. It could be, it could be heaven. It could be hell. There could be your, your imagination is limitless when it comes to the drift, uh, drive. And I think it's a really cool concept of traveling from one part of the universe to another. And, uh, and in doing so sort of like disrupting the natural order of things. So it brings a little bit of a morality tale there to some of the characters in that, is it sort of morally correct to be able to, to do something like this? That yes, it it extends the uh, the the you know the universe to boundless uh, wonders and 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 you'll be able to travel to anywhere in the universe you want. But at the same time, you're sort of disrupting life in some other universe. Is that a morally acceptable thing? So that's an interesting concept there. Uh, when it comes to starship uh, starships themselves, they have a great great section on creating your own and building your own starships um very excited about that it's very modular it's very easy to follow it's like an eight step process when you're creating your own ship uh for your characters and or using it to create ships for um enemies and encounters and stuff so lots of lots of variety there and again those are on a sort of level system uh when you're creating it for your characters you take into account how many characters you have and their levels, and then it gives you sort of build points to create the ship uh, for them in that respect as well, too. So that's very interesting. Ship combat comes down to being very tactical. It comes down to being very miniature-centric, which is fine. I think playing out Starship combat, theater of the mind is a little bit more involved, a little bit more difficult than doing... Um, miniature uh you know than doing normal fantasy combat uh theater of the mind um because there's so many sort of moving components to the starship um and 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 the space itself and sort of trying to figure out the dimensions of that in your head it's easier to do that with miniatures on a board um and i'm excited to, to see how that plays out as well too um while i prefer to do theater of the mind style i do like a game that uses miniatures at times as well um, it's very fun to generate, you know, as long as you're not using, and I want to do a video on this as well too, and using miniatures to enhance your game and not just run your game. And I'll go into lots of detail about that and that, and that, uh, the future video. But, um, I think it's okay in this such, in the situation with Starfinder of using miniatures for space combat. I think it's going to be, it's really going to enhance the game. It's going to make the game very much more visual. The great thing about this is that in, nobody's going to be left out. A lot of times in ship combat, you know, there are characters who, they just don't have a role. They just don't, they don't have a place to do anything in ship combat. They're not a pilot. They're not a gunner kind of thing. This really fills you in and lets everybody have a role. It's everybody do something during the combat that seems to really help. And that's everybody feel involved as if you were just fighting, uh, you know, on land against, a, um, you know, a big bad monster or something. Um, even in, in space combat, everybody has a role in, in the starship combat. So yeah, I was, I'm, I've been looking for a game that's been, that's going to give me the exploration that I want. I want a game that's pure exploration and will Starfinder be that game? I'm not sure yet. I think so. I think Starfinder has, gives you a great, great universe to play in. It has a very awesome background has some amazing races, has some great starships. So I think that there's a ton of possibilities there within the game that are going to let me do some really awesome exploration type games. But it does use its own world system. It has its own baked in background, its own world setting. Which while cool um, and is not super restrictive because it only gives you sort of just this one solar system... And then there's plenty of stuff out there beyond that that's, that's free for you to sort of build and explore. Um, 
I feel like I'm kind of sort of stuck with what's in the book. And I know there's going to be more stuff coming out in the future and stuff, but um, I hope to soon have a copy of Traveler and a Traveler role-playing game. And I'm going to do a video um, concerning the con comparing and contrasting exploration themes between Starfinder and Traveler and tell you which one I think is going to be the best for that. But until I get Traveler, I won't be able to give you a definitive answer on that kind of thing. So my rating of Starfinder, I'm going to give it a thumbs up. I think this is going to be a great game. I think it's a very wonderful setting. I think it's very well crafted. I think Paizo took a lot of time in crafting and making sure this thing was beautiful and it wasn't just Pathfinder in space. Uh, so I'm going to give it a thumbs up and say the, Path the Starfinder is a very interesting game. If you've played any D20 games, if you've played Pathfinder, then you know exactly what to expect from this game as far as, like, dice mechanics go and, 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 and their role-playing type things go. But I think it's unique enough that it's a great new experience if, you've, if you're looking for a break from Pathfinder or if you've never played Pathfinder before. So I think that's it for today. Thanks, everybody, and I'm QuestWise, and we're out.